Now that you have a local WordPress installation, let's mess with it. We'll check out the file structure, play with how WordPress connects to the database by changing the URL, breaking the website, and then fixing it again by editing the database tables. You'll also learn where user information is stored in the database and change a username directly, something that's not possible through WordPress itself. In this video, you'll learn several skills that can help you save a hacked or broken website and learn to hack the database yourself to accomplish what you need. Sweet! Whether you're working in a local development environment like MAMP or Local by Flywheel, or you're using a live server like SiteGround, open and log in to your WordPress website, and if you like, activate the 2016 theme. And let's explore where themes and plugins are located. Appearance, themes, is where we'll see the default theme 2016 active and a couple other themes that come with WordPress. And then if you click plugins, installed plugins, you'll see that they're located in a folder. The two plugins that come with WordPress, Akismet to prevent comment spam and Hello Dolly. Let's play with Hello Dolly. If your plugins doesn't contain Hello Dolly yet, you can just go up to Add New and over on the right side, search for uh, the word Hello or Hello Dolly and you'll find it and click Install Now and Activate. Activate that plugin, an original plugin by founder of WordPress, Matt Mullenweg, gives you a quote from the musical Hello Dolly at the top of your administration page. If we look at the file structure under MAMP HTDocs WP Dev Course 1, where the plugins and the themes are located, now it's important to know that you don't want to change any files under WP Admin, WP Includes, or any of the files in the core structure besides the config file. But the wp-content file is where all your content, including uploads, once you upload a file to the media library, it'll create an uploads folder here. And the plugins and themes are located in these folders, obviously. And if you're using your SiteGround live environment, you can go back into the SiteGround user area and click go to cPanel. The control panel will give you access to that file manager that we used in previous videos. So inside the C panel, I'll go down a little bit further to where I can see files and I'll click File Manager. Under WP Content, you can see that I have plugins and themes. And this time I have Upgrade and Uploads as well. Upgrade is created automatically by WordPress for updates of the software. And Uploads is created for the media library. But under Plugins, there's my list of installed plugins. Now, if you end up with a plugin conflict where you have an active plugin or you activate one that has a conflict that breaks your site, an easy way to go in and rectify that situation is to go in via FTP if you're on a live web server or here using Windows Explorer. You can go in and see which plugins are here. Here, this one, instead of being in a folder, being a very simple plugin is just a single PHP file. If you go in and just rename a plugin file, I'll just put dash rename after it. When you go back and log in to your dashboard in WordPress, go to the plugins page, look at which plugins I have activated, and it says the plugin hello.php has been deactivated. The plugin file does not exist. It's looking for a plugin from a, a, under a different file name and because I renamed it it deactivated the plugin and then that can bring your website either back live or eliminate the plugin conflict if you are having one. So now if I go back and into Windows Explorer I just go back and rename that plugin back to what it was. This is one way to troubleshoot conflicts with your website as you're building it. You can see that if I refresh the page here in the WordPress dashboard, that plugin is now deactivated. And this is a good way to make your website and your dashboard back active again if you were having a plugin conflict. Now navigate to Settings General. 
And let's look at the general settings here. We can see that one of the first couple of things we have is the site title and the tagline. But the WordPress address and the site address are the third and the fourth fields in the general settings panel. And you can see that the URLs are the same. But let's explore where these URLs are located within the database and find out how to change those and why we would in the first place. So if you navigate to the MAMP start page again, you can right click and open the PHP My Admin panel in a new tab, which I've already done up here. And here we are in the database, and I can click the WP Dev Course 1. Go ahead and browse into your own database using the name that you used when you set up WordPress. And if you're using the SiteGround Live site, you can go down to the database sections in the C panel and open PHP My Admin. It's the same exact utility that MAMP uses and databases on the live site are located right here. These are the tables that WordPress installs automatically and the URLs are located in WP underscore options. So if you click that once you can see all the tables located here. And the first two are the site URL and the home. And in order to change these, you can click once and, and click edit over here. You can double click right here and uh, change that to what you want. Now, if the domain was pointed to something like wpdevcourse1.com, hit enter, and that will actually change the row inside of the table in the database dot com now if I change those two I can go back and if I just refresh the dashboard here you can see that the server wasn't found now of course I cannot access my website dashboard or the website itself through this domain name wpdevcourse1.com unless I own that domain name and I have the domain pointed to the server using name servers or the DNS settings in my domain name registrar. This is something you might run across as you migrate sites from either a staging environment into the live development or live server environment at your hosting company or if you're moving sites that you're building in one place under a testing URL over to another live URL on the server as well as if you're building a site at a testing URL and then you point the domain finally to the live URL instead of to a holding page or a coming soon page that you might have open while you're building the website. Now if you can't navigate to the website or the dashboard because the DNS settings are already pointed there or you're using the wrong URL here what happens if I try to go to localhost where I know the site is located? Localhost slash WP Dev Course 1 slash WP Dash Admin. If I navigate there, there's a problem loading the page. Server's not found because it wants to redirect to wherever the database tells it to redirect. So on the server or in your home development environment, your local development environment, you can navigate back to the database and let's make this the correct URL for the site URL and the home URL so that I can actually continue building the site. If you remember, that would be localhost slash WP dev course one. And then I'll do the same thing with the home URL. And now I can be sure that if I want to go to localhost, WP Dev Course 1, my web sh website should be back working again. Yes, here it is. And I'm still logged in. So I could actually go to the dashboard and continue working on the site. So give that a try yourself. Break the website. 
and then fix it again by editing the site URL and the home URL in the database. Okay, hopefully you have broken the website and then fixed it again by editing some rows inside of your database. Now let's take a look at some more of the file structure under themes. And I'm going to navigate to WP content and themes this time. I know that my theme that I have active is 2016. Let's go ahead and just verify that. Here it is. 2016 is the active theme. So I'm going to open 2016 and just take a look at the files in here. And one of the main files that performs some layout functions and defines how the content is displayed in WordPress is called the functions.php file. Sometimes this will be a file that you might make changes on to customize a website, but there's a best practices in terms of how to edit this file and where to edit it. Let's take a look inside WordPress. By default, the WordPress dashboard comes with under the appearance panel an editor. Now the first time you visit the editor it'll give you a heads up message that says you appear to be making direct edits to your theme in the WordPress dashboard. It's not necessarily a best practice and in fact we'll learn later in the course how to make child themes so that when we want to add code to the theme files we'll do it without editing the theme itself. It's a parent theme and a child theme relationship. But you can go ahead and make direct edits anyway, and you just have to click I understand. One particular file that might be the file most often edited in WordPress themes is the style.css file. Now there's another message that you can see here that says there's no need to change your CSS or your cascading style sheets file. You can edit and live preview CSS changes in the built-in CSS editor. That's located under appearance in the customizer. There's no automatic editor or previewer like there is for CSS for the functions.php file. That's a place where you'd want to use a child theme in most cases. But I just wanted to show you if we go down to the bottom of this file, say we were doing a little editing anyway, even though it's not our best practice in the themes functions.php file. What if I deleted the last semicolon here and then went and tried to save the file? WordPress has a syntax checker. It'll check to make sure that there's no errors so your site doesn't break and give you the white screen of death, as it's so called. In this case, in my local environment, it tells me that it's unable to communicate back with the site to check for fatal errors, and so the PHP change was reverted. It won't let me break the site through the WordPress dashboard. In an example I'll show you in my one of my live sites at SiteGround, I did the same kind of thing. I deleted the last semicolon. This one was able to communicate, and it said the PHP code changes were rolled back due to an error on line 616. It's uh, expecting a semicolon. So if you make an error, it will either tell you that it can't communicate or it'll tell you what the error is and it won't let you break your own site. One more thing. Let's go ahead and look at user accounts. You should probably be the only user within your account in WordPress. You can see your WordPress email there, your role as administrator. Now, if I click on my name here or edit, I can open my profile. And suppose I wanted to change my username. Perhaps you're editing someone else's WordPress installation that's older and is using the traditional admin as a username, which is best practice not to use because it's too recognizable for hackers. But if you wanted to change a username, it says right here, usernames cannot be changed. Well, let's go ahead and change the username using the database. So navigate back to the database or go back there if you already have it open. Let's look at our WordPress tables again. And let's see, under WP users, I can see that there's a user here. User login is where the username is located. Now, if I just double click that row, I could change that 
to a different username. What if I just add my middle initial and hit enter? Great, now what's going to happen over here if I refresh the page on my profile? Oh, it's logged me out because there is no more Greg Davis as a user inside the system. The username has changed and it has the same password. So I wonder if I can log in Whoops. using the same username and password, except I've added an S, my middle initial. Great. Let's look at my profile. My username is now changed. So if you need to change the username from admin to something different or do that, you don't have to necessarily create a new user and then delete the old user. You can go into the database and edit that username. One last useful edit that we can learn using the database is to update someone's password if they can't use the lost your password link. When someone clicks this link, the system should email them a reset password link to the administrator email. But if you're using MAMP, especially earlier versions of MAMP, they don't actually send email out in the server system. If you need to, you can always log into the database using PHP MyAdmin or another database er editor, and you can edit the password of a user. But there's a particular way that you want to do that. You can see that the user underscore pass under the WP users table and the row for a user is a string. That's not the actual password. It is encrypted even inside the database. However, this can be edited. This time, instead of double clicking it like that, I'm going to click edit so that I can look at all the rows for this field inside of the table. Now the user pass is what I'm going to edit. So if I just create a password, which is not a very good one, Greg's password with a capital G, and I hit go to save this, that's actually not going to work. I want to make sure that this password is encrypted in a certain way. So under the function drop down here for this new password, I need to select MD5. That is the type of encryption that WordPress uses for passwords. So I'm looking for, here it is, it's near the top, MD5 is what you have to have selected to choose a new password for a user. Now I'll go down in PHP My Admin and click Go, and it said that one row was changed. You can see that the user pass element is now a different encrypted password, but you have to remember what that password is. So if I go back, my username is the same, but if I type that password and log in, now I have a new password for that user. In this lesson, you've broken your website in three different ways and then fixed it by editing a plugin file, the database, and the themes functions.php file. Great job. In the next video, we'll go over your student sandbox at wpdevcourse.com in detail and get it ready for you to experiment with premium themes and frameworks and premium plugins. See you there.